Good morning, kiddos. So this is our last week of our How to Train Our Attitude series. So we've talked about taming our tongue, and being compassionate, and having an attitude of gratitude. So this week we're going to talk about obedience. So in our How to Train Your Dragon series, the movie, Hiccup and his friends undertake what seems to be an impossible task. They want to teach one of the most dangerous creatures on earth how to be obedient to them. Until Hiccup trained his dragon, Toothless, no one ever thought dragons could be tamed. Dragons were to be feared and hunted and killed, not ever trained. Hiccup showed his father and his community that the right kind of training and with the right kind of leadership that you can even tame the wildest of dragons. Once the dragon became tame, they were no longer a threat to the masters. They became obedient, and they also became helpful and kind. Their whole attitude changed, and they adjusted to a new loving relationship with the Vikings. The Vikings learned to be wise and kind and patient with the dragons, and that led the dragons to change their attitudes. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about training our attitudes. We've learned that having a good attitude requires us to keep control of our tongues and the words that we speak. We've learned that we need to be kind and compassionate towards others, and we learned that we need to have a grateful heart. All of those lessons came to us out of the Bible, which is God's word. God gave us the Bible to train us how to live in a way that will honor him. And if we learn to obey the laws that God has given us, we will indeed have a better attitude and become a blessing to other people. In the Old Testament, God chose a group of people called the Israelites to be his people. He gave them a set of laws known as the Ten Commandments, and he asked them to live and act differently than the world around them by following those commandments. One of Israel's greatest leaders was a man named Joshua who led the Israelites to a land God had long promised them for their own. Before Joshua died, he urged the people to follow God's command and no one else. So today, we're going to read from Joshua. We're going to read in verse 24, uh, or chapter 24, verses um, 1 through 15-ish, okay? <laughs> or 2 through 15-ish. So Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave, many, gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country to Seir and to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought out your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. And then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites. You lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you, and you took possession of their land. Then you crossed the Jordan, and I came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow, so I gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you were living. But as for me and my house, we 
will serve the Lord. Okay, so the Israelites had been slaves in the land of Egypt. We've heard that story before, right? And endured hardships in the wilderness. They had watched as God gave them one victory after another, and they knew God was with them. Now that Israel was in a land all on their own, Joshua was, was worried that the Israelites would forget that the one true God was God and worship some of the false gods of the people who around them was worshiping. Joshua knew that if Israel obeyed God, God would continue to bless them. He would protect them from other nations and keep them safe. He would also use the Israelites to be a blessing to other people. Joshua urged the people to remember all that God had done for them and stay obedient to God alone. His message can be summed up in those final words. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our attitudes depend on many things. How much sleep we get, how many friends we might have, how good our family life is going. The single biggest factor regarding our attitude is whom we follow. Whose rules are you living by? Who's teaching you how to treat other people? Who do you want to be like when you grow up? The world offers us many leaders. Some people choose to follow after celebrities who are often only concerned about themselves. They see their favorite TV star posting selfies all over the internet and they think, that's how I want to be. Other people follow businessmen who sometimes lie, cheat, and steal to get what they want. And they see that these people didn't care about the feelings of others, but only about money. They see the houses and the cars and the fancy suits and clothes that they own, and they think, oh, that's what I want. And then we come to the Bible, and what do we see? We see a man named Jesus. He wasn't royalty. He wasn't a celebrity. He never put himself ahead of anyone, but always put others first. He left his throne in heaven to become the son of a poor carpenter. He ate with the sinners and the tax collectors. He spent time with the sick and the disabled. He gave his life so that the whole world could be forgiven of its sins. And he says to us, go and do likewise. Why should we follow Jesus? Why is his example so much better than the rich and the famous people that we see on TV? Because Jesus is God's son. He created us. He died for us. And he wants to show us a better way to live. When we follow Jesus, we reject all the selfishness and all that selfish ambition. We control our tongues and we use our words to help others. We are compassionate and we put others first. And we're always grateful for God's blessings. Why be obedient to Jesus? Because he's the good teacher. Because only Jesus can show us how to have a good attitude. And that becomes a blessing to everyone that we meet. As Joshua told the Israelites, the choice is all yours. You can choose to follow the selfish celebrities or the greedy politicians or the shady businessmen of the world. Or you can choose to follow the Lord. And that's the best way to train your attitude. So I hope you choose the right path. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed our How to Train Your Attitude series. Next week is uh, next week's Mother's Day. So heads up, it's Mother's Day. Think of something neat. <laughs> um, and that's another thing. I sent out uh, a message to a lot of the parents and uh, grandparents, whoever's email I had. I have a fun project for us to do for all of our mothers for next week's sermon. So uh, parents, guardians, please look at those emails and um, message. It's in the church newsletter too. I need those videos ASAP of the kiddos. It's going to be super cute when we can get it all together. Um, what else? Let's see. Don't forget to do your uh, don't forget to do your kahoot for this lesson. I think they've been fun. The competition is always a little fun. Give the kids something to compete for. Um, 
there's a, there will be a craft for this. So look for the craft lesson to go with this. And there's usually always an object lesson to go with all these too. Um, if y'all would like, I think some of us teachers might would like to see some of your faces and do like a Zoom chat with y'all. I put it in the, uh, the new Kidmen newsletter that we've created to try and keep in touch with you. So if there was a parent or a grandparent that did not get, or even just a church member, if you didn't get a Kidmen newsletter from me, not the church newsletter, but specifically Kidmen newsletter, let me know. My email is posted somewhere. <laughs> so uh, if you didn't get one and you would like one, please let me know because I put a lot of good Kidmen information on there for the month of April. I'm going to try and send one out monthly. And even after all this uh, quarantine mess is over with, I still hope that we can continue to send those out because I think it will be a great way for communication. But um, let's pray and then we'll be on our way. Okay? So everybody bow your heads. Dear God, help us tame our tongues. Help give us attitudes of gratitude. Help us to always show compassion and to be obedient. Teach us your ways so that we may follow after you. Lord, please keep each kid and their family safe and healthy that's watching today. Guide them in their virtual studies this week and every week. And until we can see them again, just put your loving arms around them and let them know how much we all miss them and, put, and just protect them. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. All right, guys, we miss you. And we hope to see you soon. How many of you have cookies in your house right now? Like these. Or how many of you have chocolates or ice cream or candy or whatever your favorite treat is? How many of your parents have established rules about those cookies? You know what I mean. No cookies between meals. No cookies unless I say so. No cookies until after you eat all your dinner. There are cookies in your house. There's probably rules about those cookies, right? Just as there's rules about everything. Your parents know you like cookies. They know you'd eat cookies all the time if you could. I know Zoe would. So your parents have to set rules, right? Not to be mean, but to keep you healthy. Cookies have to be eaten in moderation. Like it or not, you have to eat your fruits and your veggies and other healthy stuff first, right? Moms and dads' rules are designed to make us wise and strong. And when we obey those rules, we will prosper. The same goes for following God's rules. God never says no without a good reason. And when we follow the rules God has given us, we will be more loving towards others and grow closer. The more we learn to obey God, the better our attitudes become towards others. Listen to the Lord and obey his word. And he will not lead you astray.